This elegant cylinder is Apple's late 2013 Mac Pro. It's the fastest, most powerful computer it's ever been my pleasure to use. The Canadian base price is $3,100. This configuration with a 3 GHz 8-core Xeon processor, AMD D700 graphics, and 32 GB of RAM with a 500 GB solid-state drive leaves Apple's factory in Austin, Texas at $6,700. Selecting the Ultimate configuration will set your line of credit back $9,700 before taxes, Thunderbolt drives, and a monitor. And you'll want something like the Sharp 4K display, another $3,850. Part of its elegance is simplicity. The back panel, which lights up when you move it, has the power port, power switch, HDMI Ultra HD port, two gigabit ethernet ports, six Thunderbolt 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, and audio mini jacks for mic input and headphone or speaker output supporting both analog and optical digital. It's easy to access the innards, but unlike previous Mac Pros, there are no internal expansion ports. Wirelessly, it supports Bluetooth 4 and 802.11ac, as well as airport display output to an Apple TV. It's surprisingly quiet, even when it's turned on. During the two-week evaluation, I heard the fan once, for a few seconds while it was starting up. My loan luckily coincided with my review of the Sony FDR-AX1 4K video camera, so I primarily used the Mac Pro to edit that video using Final Cut Pro 10.1. Both HDMI and Thunderbolt support 4K output. You can connect up to three 4K displays simultaneously. Sharp did not have an evaluation monitor alone, so I connected the Mac Pro to my 27-inch iMac using a mini display port to mini display port cable connecting the Thunderbolt port on the Mac Pro to the iMac. The resolution of this display is 2560 by 1440, not quite the 3840 by 2160 resolution of 4K video, but certainly enough to be able to edit and evaluate. I did have the opportunity to connect the Mac Pro to a Sony 4K TV to view my footage, which was impressive to say the least. It took me a while to upgrade to Final Cut Pro 10, and there was a substantial learning curve from the previous version. But I've been using it happily for the last year, and there have been several upgrades increasing its capabilities. Happy, that is, until the release of 10.1, which dramatically increased the loading time. And working on this 4K video project, which underlined the age of my late 2009 iMac. The Sony FDR-AX1 records 4K in the XAVC-S format, a lower data rate than the XAVC Pro standard. I shot primarily at 100 megabits, which is four times the rate I've been using for HD. The camera will also record at 150 megabit rate. It's not that my iMac, upgraded with an SSD drive, isn't capable of playing and editing those files. It is. But with dropped frames and much more waiting and watching the spinning beach ball than I'm used to, it quickly became tedious. To import XAVCS, I installed a Sony plugin which converts the files to Apple's ProRes format. Although Final Cut doesn't load much faster on the Mac Pro, it handles the files from the AX1 with little effort. Playback is nearly flawless. I do a color correction, a transition, or titles, and have a quick look at the activity monitor to see how the CPU was doing barely a blip. Final Cut can output 4K resolution in Apple ProRes with a data rate of about 570 megabits, and for YouTube, which supports data rates up to about 45 megabits. The only time I saw it really work was while I was outputting a file, and that barely broke 50% while rendering a 15-minute 4K video, a 62 gigabyte file in less than 4 minutes. That's fast. Note here that the QuickTime screen recording is actually taking more processor power than the rendering. I was a little disappointed when it took over two hours to render the 2.3 GB YouTube version. That didn't seem to stress processor memory or disk resources, so maybe it's a process that hasn't been optimized for the Mac Pro. 
I managed to keep all of my files on the internal SSD drive, but also transferred the project to a relatively inexpensive external USB 3 drive. That didn't seem to change the performance significantly. I expect an external Thunderbolt drive to be just about on par with SSD for 4K. The Mac Pro is extremely energy conscious. It averages slightly over 100 watts in use and under 5 watts in idle mode. I don't yet own a 4K camera, but I suspect that once I do, a Mac Pro won't be far behind. And how am I going to watch HD now that I've seen 4K?